Some fuckery, eh, Harley? I don't know. <laughs> hey, how's it going, fam? Thanks for tuning in. This is another episode of Growing Crush with Silky Slim 416. Mm -hmm. Your friendly neighborhood Kush man. Yeah. And this week, we're going to tackle a crisis which is happening here in my Lodge 4x810. If you couldn't tell by the title, I got myself an infestation of spider mites. Yeah. Could you believe? Fuck. Gonna have to kill off these motherfuckers quick fast. So, don't go nowhere. I'm going to show you exactly how I handle this situation. All right? All right. So, like I said, in this episode, we're going to have to tackle some of these spider mites, which I just recently got because for whatever reason, I didn't have any problems with infestations with insects my entire grow. I had a pretty decent air circulation going on here inside of my tent, but I did make a big mistake. I fucked up, fam. Mm -hmm. If you can recall, a few weeks back, I was talking about all the weight which was being produced on all of these bud sites and the branches flopping over, and I had to incorporate a trellis net into my garden just to ensure that my branches were standing upright. But this is the problem. I went out onto my balcony and I grabbed the trellis net which was sitting out there the entire summer. So when I brought it in and I put it over my plants, could you imagine what happened? Huh? Of course, infestation with spider mites, whole bunch of fuckery. Now, I don't have anybody to blame for that except for myself. I fucked up, but hopefully you could learn from my mistake and maybe I could salvage the situation. Like I said, these plants are in week 11 of flower. I was about to chop them down next week and I was just in the process of flushing them. So it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna have to chop these plants down early. So in this episode, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop down five of these blue cheese plants from Barney's Farm Seed Company and I'm gonna chop down one of these pink kush plants which just seem to have been matured and ready to go for the last little while. The other three plants which are pink kush plants from Barney's Farm Seed Company, I'm actually gonna to toss those out onto the balcony and let them finish off out there. All right, I'm not gonna be doing too much talking. I'm just gonna let you follow along and enjoy some tunes on a Sunday afternoon. All right, so first thing that we're gonna to have to do, we're gonna to have to remove these lights, all right? Reason being is, I'm going to be chopping these plants down and I'm going to be hanging them inside of my large 4x8 tent here. I'm going to be using my large 4x8 tent to dry all of my plants, alright? So, what I'm going to need to do is make a little bit of space by removing these lights, taking out the trellis net. I will keep the fans inside of the tent, but it's going to be a little bit of a process, a little bit of work, alright? So just stick with me. Let's go. So. How I noticed I had spider mites was when I started looking at the leaves, the leaves had this kind of speckled kind of color to it. And on top of everything else, the bud production, it just didn't seem like it was getting as big and lush as it was on the other side of my tent. And there was a reason for it. I had spider mites which were sucking out all of the nutrients and the chlorophyll from my leaves. So my plants weren't growing as efficiently as they should be fucked up fam so as it is all I did is I came in here the other night I had a spray bottle and I just hit them up <laughs> one two that was it I left them the fuck alone I didn't want to do too much I didn't want to spray anything harmful onto my buds why because we're in week 11 of flowers so I'm gonna intend on chopping these down just a week early it's not a big deal but with these I'm gonna make sure that I don't let whatever infestation which was over here spread over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the trellis net, I'm gonna take down my lights and I'm gonna chop these plants down. And before I hang them to dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash all the buds just to ensure I can get any sort of dust, any sort of spider mites, eggs, any infestation off of my buds and my leaves just to clean them up a bit, all right? All right, just stick with me.
all while I'm doing this, it's kind of a necessary evil that I have to touch the actual buds that I fed through the trellis net. I don't know, trellis nets, they help out, but then at the other end of it, it's always a fucking bitch to get off. So, gotta be somewhat careful. You don't wanna be breaking your branches or knocking buds off or anything like that. Regardless, you are gonna be touching your branches. And your hands will be fucking sticky by the end of this, all right? It is what it is. So I'm just trying to slowly get to all of the main bud sites and just work them back through the trellis net the same way that they got put in, I guess. I don't know how you want to say it. So I'm just doing one corner at a time, bit by bit. And you will see all of these branches start to flop over. That's quite all right. I'm gonna be chopping these bitches down just now. going to wash these buds now I know a lot of people might not actually go through the practice of washing their buds normally it's done when you have outdoor plants you want to get off any sort of dust any feathers any shit anything that might be stuck onto your buds and your leaves that you don't want all right any impurities but with indoor plants you don't generally have to do it but in this situation I do have an infestation of spider mites I do not want to play any fucking games and leave things to chance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash all of these buds thoroughly and I'm going to show you how it's done. All right. You're only going to need a couple of household items. And if you don't have them, you could easily get them at any sort of hardware store. Pretty simple, fam. All right. Stick with me. Holy fuck. Got branches and buds flopping all over the place, but I'm going to have to pull each of these plants out one by one. Trying not to do too much damage here, but they all are going to have to come down, so it's all right. Okay, okay, get in there. That's one plant. It's one plant. Uh, branches all touching the floor and everything, but that's all. That's all good, that's all good. All right, that's one plant. We've got two plants here. Two plants of that beer tree. Yep, that's two plants right there.
jungle is real fam. They don't want to damage these plants at all, but, but you could imagine how difficult it was to try and take the trellis net off of all of these big buds. But it's done now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one pink kush plant. Seems like it's ready to go. And I'm going to chop it down. These other three pink kush plants from Barney's Farm Seed Company. I'm going to let them finish off outside on the balcony. Soon enough you'll start seeing leaves start yellowing off. And these buds will become that much more dense. Trichomes will start to build around the buds that much more. And they'll become a milky white. And that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Alright. Alright. So, on to my last plant which I'm going to chop down today. This pink kush plant which is flopping about. All the buds are mature. It's ready to go. It's all flopping onto the ground here. Use this to pop up like, uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. How about that? I'm gonna chop this all down right now. So I'm gonna be chopping down these plants. I have my hangers, I have my clippers. I'm gonna show you how to wash all of these buds in the next little while, but I just wanna clear up this area. So I'm gonna just chop everything down real quickly. All right? <laughs> chopped down and currently I still do have these three pink kush plants from Barney's Farm Seed Company just flopped over hanging around so I'm gonna end up putting a tomato cage around this plant and maybe this plant and I'm gonna put these outside on the balcony all right hmm looking spectacular yeah 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 so we just finished cleaning out everything inside of our large 4x8 tent. We took all of our pink kush plants which still needed a bit more time and we put them out onto the balcony. And the rest of these plants they've been chopped down and they're a little bit more manageable. But we're not done yet. Mm -mm. We're gonna end up washing our buds right now. Okay? So we're gonna need a few things before we could get started. So we have three five gallon buckets of water. Clean water which has been aerated for 24 hours. I threw some air stones and an air pump inside of this water, aerated it for 24 hours to evaporate all of the chlorine. So the next thing that you're going to need is some regular lemon juice. Nothing special. I just got some cheap lemon juice from No Frills or the cheap dollar store, wherever you can find it. Just get some regular old lemon juice. All right. You're going to need half a cup of lemon juice. Okay. Next thing that you're going to need is some baking soda. Yep, regular old baking soda. You're going to need half a cup of baking soda. So we're going to be mixing these things together in one bucket. So out of these three buckets of water, I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to add half a cup of baking soda into that bucket as well as half a cup of lemon juice. Okay, 
Now, the baking soda is the foaming agent, and the lemon juice is just basically the citric antiseptic which we're going to be using. This is an all-natural, basic, organic cleaning solution. This is the same solution that you will use to clean your produce or your fruits when you grab them from the grocery store. At least I hope you do anyways. But for the most part, if it's good enough to clean the fruits and the vegetables which come out of your garden outside, it's going to be good enough to clean your cush as well too. All right. So, we're going to measure out half a cup of this baking soda and we're going to be dumping it into one of these buckets. I'm going to make sure I don't mix it up here and I'm going to use the first bucket here. And it doesn't necessarily have to be exact measurements, but just need about half a cup to go into five gallons of water. All right. All right, so we got half a cup of baking soda. I'm just gonna dump it right into my bucket of water here. And that's gonna be our foaming agent or whatever it is that we're gonna use to clean. And then I'm gonna grab my lemon juice and I'm gonna add half a cup of lemon juice into this bucket of water as well too. So let me just take this off. see the foaming action so we got our lemon juice we got our lemon juice and our baking soda inside of our bucket of water which has been aerated and I'm just gonna grab one of these bamboo shoots here and I'm just gonna use it to stir everything around a bit now this bucket with the lemon juice and the baking soda, that's gonna be our cleaning bucket. So that's basically gonna clean off any dirt, any hair, any shit which is on our buds which we just don't want, all right? It's gonna end up looking quite mucky when we're done. So just to start, I got some of these branches already trimmed and I'm gonna use some of these smaller ones just to show you a quick example. Like I said, you wanna try and make sure your branches are reasonably cut to a decent size so that you can fit them into your bucket easily agitate the buds inside of the water without touching the bottom of your bucket or the sides of your bucket because you just don't want to be knocking off trichomes off of your buds all right so this is what we're going to do i'm going to use one of these stems to start off and i'm just going to dunk it inside of my water all right i'm going to swirl it around a bit doesn't have to be anything special and I'm just gonna swirl it around and dunk it in the water for about 10-15 seconds doesn't have to be extremely long and after I finish doing that just gonna shake off whatever water is on that and I'm gonna dunk it into my second bucket of water alright now this is completely clean water there's no lemon juice no baking soda or anything inside of this bucket alright so I'm just dunking the bud which was just inside of the lemon juice and baking soda solution inside of the clean water. This is going to be washing off any of that baking soda and lemon juice because you don't want to be adding any sort of extra stuff to your weed, right? So we just dunked it in our second bucket. Now we're going to dunk it in our third bucket of just plain water once again. This is going to be the last and final dunking that this bud receives before we hang it back up to dry, all right? So we're just going to swirl it around for a few seconds, dunk it a bit, try and make sure that we get it all soaked, and we're going to hang it back up. And the fact is, is that you may be looking at it and saying, oh, it looks funny, it's all soaking wet, but we're drying the weed. And we're going to be drying it just the same way as we would if we didn't wash our weed. But at least now, our weed is clean. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to grab a hanger, and I'm going to put it right back onto the hanger, and I'm going to let it hang. And that's it. And I'm just going to continue moving forward with the rest of the weed. All right? So... Here's the next small stem. I'll do this one real quickly. I'll just go through this one hanger, show you exactly what I'm doing in fine detail. And then after that, speed things up a bit, let you enjoy some tunes. And I'm not gonna waste your time with a bunch of blah, 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 all right? 
So that's the next bud. Moving on along, moving on along. It may seem like a tedious process at first when you look at your harvest and it's all chopped down, but I mean, it's a necessary evil if you want to make sure that your weed is properly cleaned, all right? So if you do have any large fan leaves, you can remove them, but once again, any sort of fan leaves which you have on your weed and you dry it with your weed, it's going to help dry your weed longer. And what you're trying to do is ensure that you could dry your weed for the longest period of time possible. That's it. That's a couple of them taken care of. But before we actually go through the rest of these, why don't you take a second to check out my setup. As you notice, I did remove all of the lights which are inside of my large 4x8 tent here. And I am going to continue washing all of these buds which are hanging up one by one and then hanging them back up inside of this tent in complete darkness for at least 7 to 10 days, alright? I want these buds to dry slowly. I don't want them to dry quickly. Like I said, if you dry your weed out too quickly, your weed's going to taste like shit, okay? I don't want that. I want this to be some fire, okay? So. Aside from that, I also have my fans still inside of my tent. I just lowered them down so that the wind is not going to be blowing directly onto my buds. I just need them in there to help circulate the air. As well, I did plug in a small humidifier in the corner of the tent, and this is just to help regulate the humidity level. After I finish washing all these buds, I'm going to leave it hung up inside of my tent in complete darkness for 7 to 10 days, all right? I'm going to try and aim for a temperature between 18 degrees and 23 degrees Celsius. And if you're in America, that's between 65 degrees and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? As well, I'm going to keep a relative humidity between 45 and 55 percent. And this humidifier is going to help with that. I'm going to keep my fans running at a low speed and my humidifier at a low setting. As well, I will be keeping my exhaust fan running. Mm -hmm. But as it is, I'm just going to be going through each and every one of these hangers with these plants and I'm going to be washing all these buds and then I'm going to close her up for the night. All right? All right. <laughs> It's... Mm -hmm. 
done just on my last branch I'm just gonna finish rinsing this off if you take a look at my buckets here you can see the condition of my water it looks pretty gross and disgusting but like I said this is my last branch and this is okay you don't really need to change your water if you're just gonna be doing a small amount got six plants and I actually ended up adding I actually ended up adding in a next pink kush plants so it's actually seven plants which I just finished chopping down and like I said I'm not hitting the side of the bucket with the buds I'm not hitting the bottom of the bucket with the buds and really all of that brown water is really all dust dirt hair a whole bunch of bullshit that you don't need inside of your weeds so after I finish dunking it inside of the first bucket with the baking soda and the lemon juice solution gonna just let it drip free and then put it inside of the second bucket do pretty much the same motion don't have to agitate it around or swirl it around too much I find just this whole dunking motion works quite well guess what fam you just finished watching another episode of Rowing Push with Silky Slim 416. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you very much for watching to the very end. And if you haven't already, make sure you go and follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and if you're not following and subscribe to my channel right here on YouTube, make sure you do that as well too. Go down below, slap that like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Alright? Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I helped some of y'all out. And if you do have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section and I will try my best to get back to you. Alright? I'll see y'all next week. Mm.